Hey everybody, good to see you again. Quick look at the portfolio just to see how everything's going on. And there's been some movement around. Look at that, Thomas Parry Jones is up now. He's in sort of third place. I've ordered them there by profit and loss. So Thomas Parry Jones moved up to third place. Uh, Marco there, Swissway's in second. Melvin's still at the top, been there longest. I've been copying him far longer than anyone else. It's a little bit unfair, that one. Fund Manager Zek has moved up to fourth place. Look at him with $20 there in profit, plus that $5 in refunds. Uh, Autobus is down a little bit. Um, he's been sort of making some trades which are losing at the moment, but there we go. Let's see how that goes. I think one of them had actually turned green, so his latest one had turned green, indicating that that, that asset may have changed into the direction he's looking for. But anyhow, Amit Kup uh, and uh, Selesh are still down. Selesh is obviously, I've got one in red. I've got one of my traders is now in red. And it's not terrible. I mean, he's down. That was at, what, $40 profit or $50 profit or something. So he really has come down a lot. But um, it's not terrible yet. I'm not panicking yet. Obviously, I don't like to see it. I was so happy seeing everything in green. And I sort of thought he was so high in green that I had like a buffer, like a safe zone. But he's really come down there. But it's not terrible. Not terrible just yet. So um, first thing, Amit Cook. Remember last time I was talking about the copy stop loss? and not knowing where to set it. And I left him that comment. I don't think he saw my comment, right? He didn't see it. He's dealing with a lot of people. So I asked it again kind of more clearly. So here is my post. Now, what I'm basically asking him here is whether we should set our copy stop loss to 30% meaning we're gonna risk 70% of our funds before the copy stop loss kicks in, which is what he seemed to be saying before. Or was it just a miscommunication? And really what he means is set the copy stop loss to 70% so that we're, we're risking 30% of our funds, because it's a big difference, right? And if we were risking 70% of our funds, I don't think I'd be comfortable with that. But if we're risking 30% of our funds, Fair enough. All right. So, um, so I asked him, I gave him the two options and asked him which one was the real option. He said, oh, right. Yes. So definitely option B. Option B, we set our copy stop loss at 70%. So we're willing to, willing to risk 30% of our invested funds before the copy stop loss takes effect. So he was saying the one I hoped he was saying. So it's, we set it at 70%. So I'll go back and show you what that means. So in the portfolio, if I go back to Amit Cup, I go here to uh, adjust stop loss. I go to percentage because I can click, I can show an amount or a percent. Setting it here, which is what he's suggesting, 70%, means if the value drops below 70%, so if there's less than 70% of the funds I've invested left copying him, just cut it off and return those funds to me. I want to keep 70% for sure, right? I'm willing to risk 30%. Uh, we can put that in an amount. So I'm currently copying in with $809. If I put it to amount here, then I, I want to make sure that I keep 580 of those uh, invested, copy invested dollars, right? So if it ever falls below $580 in total value, my copy, cut it off, send it back to me. So that is what I've set. I'm good with that. And that's what he was suggesting. So that's sort of cleared that up. And it's put my mind at rest, really, because risking 70% is a lot. It's too much for me. You know, I would have had to half the amount I'm copying them with and then up the amount of my that I'm risking to keep that amount the same, the amount that I'm risking the same. Anyhow, he is down at 656. Why is he there? Let's have a look just at his stats at the moment. Up 8.55% in January, down 4.85% in February, and 1.09% loss in March. So far, he's up still 2.17%. So he's still up for the year. And if we look back at his uh, statistics, we can see there's only one losing year, minus 7.82% in 2020. And that was the year where everyone was getting sort of very terrified of getting ill. And a lot of people had a tough time, especially around March of that year. Remember, everything really dropped down. So that's the only year where he's actually lost. The rest of the years, he's in profit. He's still in profit for this year, but obviously some of those uh, assets that he's holding have drawn down. If I go to his portfolio, let's look at something. We can see that the only ones down here in his portfolio are Warrior Metal Coal, Whitehaven, and MPCC. Um, but ASC is up and Petro, the Brazilian oil company, is up. But if I go over to my portfolio and I look at the um, my copy of him, we can see that also the um, Brazilian petroleum one is down because I copied him later. So some of that trade is still in profit in his portfolio, but in mine it's down. So these ones are still struggling. We had a look at them last time. Still struggling as assets. He's still holding on to them. Remember this one, the Brazilian one, where people were saying there's a leftist government and they're going to wreck it and all the rest of it. I don't know. Obviously leaving that to him, trusting him to really correctly analyze whether it's time to stay in that or get out of it. With all of them, at the moment, he seems to be happy to stay in it. Whitehaven Coal, Warrior Metal Coal as well. I think that one was down further. So let's have a look at that, just HCC, just quickly. Sometimes I look at them 
I don't want to manually trade, but sometimes I do look. So Warrior Metal Coal seems to be up there. Let's go back. Oh, so daily, it's been going up for the last few days. There we are. So since the 14th of March, it has been going up. That one looked a little bit better. What's he been saying in his profile down here? We can see his last post was actually, what a brilliant weekend. My family and I found some time to get out of the city for a while. The scenery is truly outstanding now as spring progresses. Now it's back to the office. Update. The next few weeks could get volatile and I'm planning to take full advantage of that volatility. See, volatility, I always associated it with just risk and downside risk, right? So if I see volatility, oh no, oh no, volatility. But traders, are, and that can be true, especially for new people, if there's volatility, statistically we make bad decisions and lose because we get scared. But for an actual trader, volatility is their friend. They want price movements, right? That's why people use leverage to make those price movements bigger because that's what they're trying to sort of capitalize off, price movements and assets. So for, for someone who actually knows what they're doing, hopefully volatility is a friend. Obviously, if there's too much, people can often sit it out and go, whoa, whoa, hold on a minute. I'm not sure about this. This is a high level of volatility. But in general, people do want movement in asset prices or else the market's stale and you can't make any money. So I intend to increase my invested funds on eToro by roughly 50% on April 1st. Hold on a minute, April 1st. April 1st, 2024. Um, last week, I received some great replies on my Petrobas post that I'd like to share my thoughts on with you. Now, someone here was talking to him about how his uh, Brazilian oil investment was maybe not a good idea. Now, you can go and read this post on his profile to sort of get a, an idea of what he's thinking about that long term. But he is watching it and his, his reply sort of made sense. Now, we'll see. I don't know how that's going to turn out. At the moment, I'm still trusting Amit. Um, and we'll see what he does. But I'm going to leave it, obviously, for the while. He's got, you know, good statistics going back over time. Let's go to his uh, risk scores. They're at moderate, all right? So his max yearly drawdown is still 7.71. Average 5, max 5. His copiers have been going down. He's lost 2% of his copiers in the last um, seven days. But there we are. I'm still going to keep trusting him. He's still staying in the portfolio. Obviously, I wish it was all green um, or greener. But it's not. He's gone down a bit since we started looking. Now, Selesh, what's Selesh doing? He's still shorting these markets. He's still shorting all of the major indices in Europe and in the States. Um, he's shorting them whilst they're going up. That's a bit difficult. Let's look at the SPX 500 quickly and just see how that's going. SPX 500 still going up. It's going up. Oh, my goodness. Look at that. So that's November and that's 2024. Whee! It's just going up, right? Now, he might not think it's going to go down completely. He might not be looking forward to a bear market. He might just think that it's sort of going to correct downwards sometime soon. So he might think there's going to be a drop here. Maybe there will, like one of these, you know, boop, and then it goes up. It never travels in a straight line, you see. It goes down, up, down, up, down, up. The markets never go like this. They go like this, right? So he might just be waiting for one of these pullbacks to kind of get out of these shorts. I'm not sure. I'm not sure what he's doing, but... It's losing money at the moment. It's a little bit scary. So he's also gold. Gold has been, he's shorting gold. Gold's been on an unbelievable uptrend. It's, it's slowed down in the last few days, but it's just been on an uptrend. So he's just on the wrong side of the markets for a while. He's just, he's in, in the trades the wrong way. We'll see what happens. Again, let's go to Selesh and let's look at his stats. Um, we've got 2.3 in January. We've got minus 2.42 in February, minus 4.82% in March so far. He's on nearly minus 5% for the year. Now, what can I tell about what's going to happen next with him? Because that scares me. I don't like to see it. I don't know. So I look at his statistics. I go back and I see, has this sort of thing happened before? And going back into statistics, again, we've got like just four profitable years. He's down so far this year. But we do see sets of two down months. Here, there's two of them are down. And then it goes green. Here, there's two months down. Then it goes green. Two months down. Then it goes green. Two months down. Then it goes green. Let's hope we get a sea of green now. And very often, the second month, look, 2.96, it gets bigger. The losses are worse on the second month, repeatedly. Uh, something to do with how, he, you know, his style of trading or what he's trading in or how markets move, maybe. Or maybe it's got nothing to do with it. It'll be down for the rest of the year. I don't know. But I'm looking at the past and I'm hoping that's an indication that things will turn around. And look, when it does turn around, there's generally quite a big snap back. Look, did a big snap back. Down, down, big snap back. Down, down, quite a big snap back. You see what I mean? So um, it, he's just obviously waiting for it to turn around. Let's hope that happens again. I don't know, but I'm still obviously copying Selesh. That's not investment advice. I don't know what's going to happen next. I really don't. I wish it was all green again, 
but I'm, I'm waiting, I'm waiting. He's, I found him in the most consistent traders, right? So let's hope that consistency carries through in this pattern. Uh, we'll see. So uh, that's what's happening there. Autobus a little bit down because he's on the wrong side of some of these trades. But again, looking at um, his statistics, uh, we've got uh, four years of profits and profits there in that one and profits there in this one. And again, we don't see huge losing red streaks generally with him. Generally, it goes down. It does seem to... To, to turn around. So we'll see. Uh, waiting for Kresmir as well. He's still on the red star, still champion level popular investor. I believe that they're all starting to add money to sort of get up to that next level. Uh, back to the portfolio. Thomas JP, Thomas Parry Jones, look at him winning. Thank you very much, Thomas. Um, PJ, uh, he's doing very well. Let's have a look at what he's doing in his stats. Uh, it's just going to look awesome. 4%, 12%, 4.6%. Wow. Let's look at it over the long term. We've got just solid winning there. Solid winning from Thomas Parry Jones. Really looking good. What's he sort of trading? A range of stuff. Again, we've got lots of JP Morgan Chase, Citigroup, lots of banks. Now, people talking about how the banks are, are looking a bit unstable. There was that, some um, relief, but it was the small banks, not really the big banks, was given out by the US government for the last few years. Because remember, there was a point where banks started failing a couple of years ago, three years ago. Apparently, the US government put in sort of a fund to, to prop them up. I think that fund, that measure by the US government stopped, I think, last week. So there's some people watching small US banking stocks at the moment. Uh, there's also problems, apparently, with commercial real estate, and that might impact. I don't know. Not a trader, not an investor, but um, we'll see what happens. He's invested in a lot of these, but he seems to be doing well. Obviously knows the market better than I do, and hopefully there is a problem with the banking sector. He'll know how to address that much better than I can. Look, MasterCard, Visa, American Express, look at him, Moody's, rating agencies in the US, a lot of financial stuff, Bank of America, and then Rolls-Royce in there. Why not? Rolls-Royce. So um, he's doing very well. Thomas Perry Jones, thank you very much. Marco Swissway, still doing amazingly. He's up there, really doing well. Look at the stats here on, on Swissway. 0.12 in January, 3% in February, 0.7% in, in March. Three profitable years, doing really well. Risk scores, really rock bottom. Look at that, one to three and he's making profit. That's a nice risk to reward ratio, I'm imagining right there. Uh, up 3.6% in his copiers in the last seven days. So look at that, they really have sort of taken off there. 9% max yearly drawdown for the year. What's he trading at the moment? Again, he's an indices guy. He's thrown in some Bitcoin and I saw some people posting, oh, hey, what's this? I don't want to see any Bitcoin in there. Whatever. Um, he's doing well and uh, long may it continue for the moment. So there he is. And Melvin, Melvin's just doing well. Let's have a look at Melvin's stats because we never do. I always just leave Melvin because I've been copying him for a long time. He's very stable, very steady, so I sort of ignore him. 0.22 down in January, up 1.2 in February, up 0.6% in March. And again, not many statistics. You know, I keep saying I've been copying him for ages. I got on board very early there with Melvin, but he's done very well. So when there's losses, they're only small losses. He seems to be very good at limiting those losses when there are them. Uh, and he's doing well. So long may it continue. Thank you very much, Melvin. I very rarely say hello or thank you to, to Melvin. Uh, now, what else is happening? Over in my wallet, let's go and look at this. We can now see that my crypto proportion, remember we can see now what's in my eToro money crypto wallets. So 13.46% of all my holdings are now crypto because the cryptos have gone up, right? That was at 670 at one point. So it's gone down again, but $598 worth of Bitcoin, $125 worth of Ethereum, um, over there, uh, held in my crypto wallet. So they're now forming a bigger part of what I've got. 5,383. Now, I wish it, it counted this towards my eToro tier, because if it did, I'd be on the next tier. Hold on, let's see. So I've got 5,383. I need to be over 5,000. I'm going to click this. If I was over $5,000, I'd move into the silver tier. And I was looking at that. Check your status. Okay, so this is going to show me my status. At the moment, my status is the bronze tier, right? We all start out at bronze when we haven't got enough money to be in the special club, right? And that's me. Your club tier is bronze. Now, uh, it's saying I'm only $637 away from silver. Woo! I can join the silver tier. $637. Well, hold on a minute. Over here, my tier balance, it says that I've actually... One sec. It says... Etoro realized equity, your cash available and total funds invested minus excluded products. What are my excluded products? Because it says there my total invested is 4,363. Remember that number, 4,363. So it's saying I've got $637 away. 4,363. Let's go back to my portfolio. Actually, 4,659. 
So what are these excluding products where it's taking off like $300? So instead of 4,600, it's saying I've got 4,363. So I'm gonna go and find out what these excluded products are because I want that silver tier. So I'm on the eToro Club page and I'm gonna go down. I'm gonna try and find the frequently asked questions. All right, how do I obtain membership? How is tier balance defined? Here we go. Membership tiers are defined by tier balance. That's what they were looking at, right? So I've got 4,600, but it's saying that my tier balance is only 4,300 because of am excluded products. We can break it down this way. Tier balance is the available cash in your eToro trading account. That's the money I'm not using, my available cash, plus the total amount invested in the eToro trading account. It's all the money that you're actually invested in using, minus excluded products, plus the cash value available in your eToro money account. I don't have any money in the eToro money account. So what are the excluded products? Excluded products for this purpose are leverage CFD positions and crypto positions if you are a UK resident. I'm not a UK resident, so it's not this one. So there we are, that's what it is. It's the leverage CFD position. So when I'm copying people and those people are using leverage, those leverage CFD positions, the copy positions that I have open, they're not counted towards my tier balance. And that's why even though I've got, what is it, 3,000 or 4,600 something in my uh, eToro account, only 4,300 is counting towards the next tier. So I've got to make, I've got to add 650 or something to get to the silver tier. So that I do really wish that it added this, uh, my crypto holdings, because then I'd pass that, that mark and I would be on the silver tier, but it doesn't count this. So I'm still, what is that, uh, 630 something away from that silver tier. Now, if I do get to the silver tier, what's the point in that? Is there any point in me getting there? Let's go back and have a look again. So we'll go down and here we can see silver tier. If you've got over 5K, all the same stuff here, we've all got all of these. Uh, let's go eToro tax report, crypto staking, which we can go into what these things are. But these are all the benefits of being on the silver tier. One here, discount or exemption on exchange fees. Now remember, when, whenever we add money to eToro uh, or take money out of eToro, it always changes it into dollars. So if we're not in the US, whenever we upload money, it's gonna change it into dollars, unless we already have a dollar account and we're adding it from there. What this does is it will give me a 25% discount on those exchange fees. So there's some use to being in the silver tier. We also get access to the eToro Club Trading Academy um, and various things. Delta Pro Investment Tracker. Have you had a look at this, by the way, Delta Pro Investment Tracker? Let's go here and look at it. Uh, now you can download it. I'm gonna use Delta on the web. Okay, Delta, and I've signed into this with my eToro account. I signed in earlier just to see what it was, and it's basically tracking everything. I've never used this. In the comments, let me know if you've used this, if you find it useful. So here we can have an overview. It's showing all different types of assets, right? It's showing some like ETFs, it's showing some stocks, it's showing cryptos, and it's just trying to show the most active out of all of them. The top gainers over here, top losers out of everything, cryptocurrency, stocks, funds. And you can cycle through, here we have cryptos, NFTs, stocks, funds, indices, commodities, and Forex. So it's a sort of place to keep track of basically the entire market, as far as I can see. Now you can um, uh, star things, you can make your own portfolio, use the Delta Mobile app to add transactions. I think you can sort of make up your own portfolio and see what you want to track. Um, what's over here? Portfolio insights. So, you know, have you used this? Is this like a, a, an app that you use at all? Uh, let me know if you do and if it's useful. I haven't used it at all. But obviously we get access to a, a free version of this. I'm not in the club tiers and it just let me look at this on web. There is also an app you can download to your phone and I think there's a pro version of this which maybe if you're in the higher tiers it unlocks. But again, I've never used this. So what I don't get at the silver level is that interest on cash balance, which we were talking about last time. So the, the money that I'm not using, I'd get interest on it. Don't get that. You start getting 2% on your available balance there when you're at gold tier level. So you've put in more than 10K uh, assets into your eToro account. I'm not there yet. I'm still very far away. Okay, so that's pretty much it. That's the portfolio. These two are obviously down, but I think, you know, they've got enough experience to kind of turn that around. Hopefully go back into those high green numbers. They were doing so well. They were the two big winners, eh? How the portfolio has kind of moved around and rearranged itself. Anyhow, we'll see what happens next time. If you know of any other people to sort of copy, any other good traders, please let me know. I'll have a look at them. And until the next time, please like, please share, subscribe. It helps the channel a lot. Hope you're doing really well, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.